Hey guys and welcome to Nicko. In today's video we're going to go over how to make this really cute and adorable amigurumi candy corn. So I thought this was a really interesting seasonal pattern to do and I'm pretty excited with how it turned out. I feel like it's also a really good lesson on how to do more triangular shapes when it comes to uh, doing your amigurumi. So if you had something that was more triangular versus circular, it would be a nice kind of a way to show how you might go about doing that. A lot of my stuff is just working in the round and it's pretty basic, but this is a little bit more unique and different. If you like videos like these, be sure to hit like and subscribe. It's a nice free way to help the channel and help support us make more videos like this. We also have a Patreon if you're interested in doing something like that. I have links for all of that down below, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. For this video, I will be using Vanish Choice Specific Yarn. This is a worsted weight yarn. Uh, but I'm using all of the same, for all these colors, I'm using the same brand just so that there is a nice evenness amongst all the layers. If you do go with a different uh, brand, make sure that you're using all the same brand with the different colors across. Otherwise you might get a different, uh, the weights across yarns can be weird and wonky and Vanna's Choice works with Karen Simply Soft would look really weird and uneven and jagged and the way that you're going to get the most even look is if you use the same brand across. So I'm using a white color, I'm using an orange color, and I'm using a yellow for the three different colors. So if you want to do something different, do it that way. <laughs> you will also need a size D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a Susan Bates as always. And you also need some stuffing, which I don't have pictured right here. Um, I also have some six millimeter little beady eyes, which I'm using for the eyes, obviously. All right, I'm gonna plop my yarn over here and we're going to create a magic ring. I have a tutorial on how to do a basic magic ring down below if you're interested in learning how to do that. I'm placing my magic ring on my hook and I'm going to create a magical um, ring essentially. With I basically chain two and then I make that my magical ring which I've shown how to do in my basic amigurumi patterns before. So I'm going to skip the first chain from my hook since I chained two I'm gonna go inside of the very first chain that I made and I'm going to place six single crochet on the inside right there I'm gonna pop up the pattern for here for people that like to see the pattern I don't know if I'm gonna make a chart for this one I might depending on how simple it is so I've got one two three four five six and see how it got a little wide and a little bit weird because I made my magic ring I can take my tail and I can just pull it and it'll bring it nice and taut so the next round that we do as you can see from the pattern that I posted up here and also there will be a written pattern linked down below if you're interested in more of a ad free PDF pattern version of this that will be down below uh, we are going to, what I would usually do when I'm working in the round is I would increase every single stitch, every other, every third, every fourth, every fifth, going all the way down uh, across the rows. But for this, I'm not doing that. I'm going to increase every other because that's going to get me from six stitches on my piece up to nine. And that is going to create, uh, by only increasing three instead of the uh, double that I'm going to be making a more triangular shape so essentially instead of increasing six stitches every single round when I'm working like say with my ghost I increase six stitches every single round as I go along I'm only gonna be increasing three stitches which will half it which essentially makes it into more of a triangular shape that's the real thing that I'm doing here so you can take these same principles with this amigurumi pattern and you can make a bigger candy corn based on how big you want it and how many increases you want to go along. So on our, that was our first round was making the ring and putting six inside. So along round two, we are going to be playing with the first stitch here. We're going to be placing one single crochet there. And then we're going to go into the next stitch and increase. So I'm going to try not to split my yarn as I go along, but you know, it happens. We're going to go again, one, 
And then the next stitch, we're going to go in and place two stitches within that one stitch. Two. So one again, and then on our final increase, we're going to go here again with another stitch inside that. See, there's two stitches inside there. You'll notice that your yarn wants to kind of curl in on itself. You're going to correct that by pushing it outward. This is, and I also like to kind of pull on my tail to make sure that my tail is as taut and as pulled as it can be. All right, so this next stitch, we are going to do the same thing where we're increasing three stitches this round. Because we increased um, every other, this first stitch, we're going to do it every third stitch for this next third round. So we're going to go one, two, and then you'll notice that it's right above where you increased last time. We're going to do an increase there again. One, two, one, two, increase, and then one more time. One, two, increase. And at this point, I like to move my tail because there's enough stitches on here that the tail will help be a stitch marker. So I'm going to pull my tail through the front of that last stitch and I'm going to make a little bit of a stitch marker like I usually do with... Oh no! I just undid my stitch. Like I usually do with my, my stitches. There we go. I'm going to re-put my increase there. Alright. So now that we have gotten up from 9 to 12 stitches, we're going to go up to 15 stitches again. So we're going to go one, we increased another round, so we got another space between our increases. So one, two, three, increase, that fourth stitch, one, two, three, increase, that fourth stitch again, and then one, Two, three, increase this last stitch. I'm going to move my marker from where it was. Take that out. You can also just straight up use a stitch marker if you find that to be easier. I'm just cheap and uh, I like to save money where I can and I tend to lose stitch markers all the time and a tail is just essentially a free stitch marker so I like to do that. All right. So now that we have reached our 15 stitches, we have reached the point where we have finished with our white yarn. We are then going to trade over into our orange yarn. There's lots of different ways that you can go about doing that. I personally like to just leave my white yarn on here for a hot second. I'm going to backpedal for a hot second with this last stitch. And instead of pulling through with the white yarn, I'm going to pull through with my alternate color, which at this time is going to be orange, because I'm going from white to orange to yellow. So I'm going to make a small tail, like so. I will eventually trim that so it's not as apparent. We are going to pull our yarn. I'm going to leave a small tail. Oh, I can get the poly fill out of there. Leave a small tail, I'll trim that later. I'm going to pull my yarn through there, and then that makes it so that it kind of just is a more even there. We're going to single crochet four and then increase on the fifth stitch so that we can get up to 18 stitches. We're going to continue along just like we were before. So one, two, three, four, and you'll notice that your bump is going right there, so five, and then you increase that stitch. One, two, three, four, five, and then you increase again. One, two, three, Six again. So that's the six is the increased stitch that I just made. 
So you'll notice there is a slight little tiny jagged edge. The way that I like to alleviate that a little bit more, I'm going to pull my tail out just a tad bit. I'm going to take my working white yarn that was still attached. I'm going to take my tail from my purple, I'm a purple, my orange. There we go. And I'm going to knot it really tight and then I'm going to double knot it just to make sure that it's nice and taut. If I could make a knot, you know, that'd be good. And then, because I didn't unattach it already, when I go to cut it really short, I'll waste less yarn. So I'm going to take my yarn over here, my white yarn, it's just going to go away. I'm going to throw away my tail and I'm going to tuck in what was my tail over there. So right now I still actively have my white yarn tail from the very first tail that I had and that's acting as a stitch marker and then I have my active orange yarn. We are now going to go increase again another three stitches along here. We're going to crochet, single crochet one, two, three, four, and five, because we're adding one every single time, and then six and seven, six is going to turn into a seven right there. So we've got six and seven within that one stitch. One, two, three, there we go, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three. Oh, I've got polyfill. It's just everywhere. There's no getting away from it. Three. Wait, no, that was four. Five. Six. Seven. Also, I apologize if you can hear all the cars going around. It seems to be a really busy day, and I don't know why. Alright, so we're going to do this for another round. We have three rounds of the orange. In the pattern, I actually have it color-coded, so if you're interested in that, again, it's down on Ravelry. I'm going to single crochet six, and then seven is going to be our increase stitch. So we're going to go seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's our increase. I'm going to pull the tail just a little bit again. It's the main part of crocheting that takes the longest is just continuing to pull your working yarn. Two, three, four, five, six, seven and increase to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on our eighth, remember, we are now going to alternate into the yellow color that I was working with earlier. We are going to do the same thing that we did with our white in that we are going to not pull all the way through on our eighth stitch. We are going to keep our orange yarn attached temporarily for now. We're going to create a small tail once more, dropping our orange yarn. We are going to pull our yellow through. I like to give it a little bit more of a tail. There we go. You can always tug on the other side to make it so that it's a little bit more taut. And now we are going to increase on our eighth stitch. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I split my yarn. Oops. Six, seven. Eight, and then that eight is going to turn into a nine with our increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
six, seven, eight, and then nine into the same stitch. We're going to move our yellow yarn there and get it a little bit pulled out a little bit more. I like keeping it a little bit separated for now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then again, nine. We're going to unattach the way that I did before, where I'm going to double knot the working orange yarn, the once working, it's still technically kind of active. I want to try to pull it nice and tight. The tighter you get it, the less of a seam you'll find on the side. I find you can also do something called, um, like, it, what is it called again? It's not short rows because that's what it is in knitting. I don't remember what they're called and, um, crocheting, but you can kind of do half rows. There we go, half rows. That's where my brain was going. And uh, you can do half of one color, half of the other, and it minimizes what it looks like going across. But because this seam, I put it on the side, you don't really see it that much, especially when you're looking at it face on, which is kind of the point of this little guy. So I'm going to cut my tail, not my working yarn. That would be a mess. There we go. I'm going to cut that, get it out of the way. And we're going to finish up with our yellow. I'm going to put my tail actually pointing towards the inside. It'll all be hidden once you, you know, stuff it and do all that. We are going to now pick up and every ninth stitch we're going to increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and increase to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and increase. One, and that was our last color change actually so one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and now we have reached our last increasing row. We are currently at 30 stitches. I guess I probably should have mentioned it, what stitches we were at the end of every row. I'll probably put a little thing that says how many stitches we need to be at at the very top. Um, we are going to now increase every 10th stitch to 33 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, to an increase there, one, two, three, four, five, six, trying not to split the yarn, seven, eight, Eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My video cut out. So nine, ten, and again eleven on this last one. We're going to take our main tail and I'm going to pull it through as a stitch marker for this round and from here on out we are going to just single crochet across for this last final round. One, two, 
and on our final stitch, instead of single crocheting it, I'm going to actually slip stitch into it instead. Slip stitch, and then I'm going to do a quick little chain to kind of close it in. I'm going to make a decently long tail, probably about 12 inches long. I'm going to pull my tail through my chain like so. I'm going to get rid of my stitch marker because it's not needed anymore. I'm going to cut it actually so that it's just inside there. And we're going to have it so that our piece is facing us like this. Let me get rid of the tail. And this is where I like to add the eyes before I stuff it and close it up. Actually, I close it up and stuff it kind of amongst the same time. So I always stuff it between the 8th and ninth row. And I try not to make them too close together. Because if I put them too close together, it's not as cute. It looks just kind of... I don't like it as much. So I personally like it when they're a little bit further apart. If you like them close together, you do you. It's your creation. You can do what you want with it. You know? Make what you want. Do what you want. And so I like them about that far apart, about an inch. And then I'm going to actually take my cappers. These ones are a little bit harder. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they're, you know, main brand and not the Wish ones that I usually get that are actually pretty flimsy on the back. I'm going to cap those on and then I'm going to go grab some stuffing and then I'll show you how I seam along the bottom. All I'm doing for that essentially is just a mattress stitch to make it so that it looks pretty seamless and it kind of adds a stitch as you go along. I'm going to go grab some stuffing and I'll be right back. Okay, so I totally grabbed way too much fluff for the job that I am needing, but I have a 20 pound box of fluff uh, in my living room, so that kind of just happened. So I'm just going to have that on the side here. I'm going to start seaming because I seam as I stuff. It makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to go through the backs and through the center of my stitch. I'm going to go across here, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side going through the back and going through that way. There we go. So again, going through the back, pulling through, going through the back, pulling through. I tend to do this in intervals of six and then I'll pull it a little bit. Pull it really tight, that way it's seamless. I'll do it every like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I will pull it. Whatever you find is comfortable for you. So here I'm going to actually start stuffing initially. I'm going to take small pieces and ball them, and then start kind of just shoving it in the corner that I've already sewn up. Trying to get it around that eyeball, that's really the tricky part, is getting it behind the eyeball and firmly behind the eyeball. if you don't stuff properly behind your safety eyes it will get a little bit wonky and weird in that the other end of it wants to come out the back side of your little candy dude so I always try to get a little bit like right behind the eyeball backing right there just so that it doesn't want to try to go through as much as it wants to I also don't stuff too much on the tip I try to get it just a little bit in there because otherwise it will look a little bit more rounded than it should. It should look a little bit more pointy than not. I'm going to continue on. I just stuff as I go. So one. Oh, that one's one I went through. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Pull. You can do it in larger intervals, but it tends to um, get a little bit trickier to pull on it. There we go. 
I'm always trying to make sure that it's fluffing upwards towards the, the stitch on the inside part there, because otherwise it will look a little bit sad. And I keep going, because it's going to need a little bit. and I pull and also kind of make sure that things are getting where they need to be pushing where it needs to go probably gonna f use the fast forward motion when I'm not talking and just kind of rolling things up and shoving them into the little candy corn because otherwise it's gonna get really inane and dull Always going in from across from where your yarn is. There we go. Push, push, push all around. You kind of shape it as you go. I'm going to try to get a little bit more in that corner because that corner can look saggy if you don't get enough stuffing in there. But if you get too much stuffing in there, then you might try to sew in your polyfill. So that's all kinds of fun. I'm actually going to use a stick to try to get that in there. There we go. That actually worked really well. Mostly. Use a crochet hook to get it shoved in there. Oh, well, that also works apparently. Nope, that does not work. There we go. And there we go. We're gonna do our final little stitch up, stitch up, stitch up here. And I'm going to sew in my tail, and then you're all done. That is pretty much all there is to this little candy corn, dude going to go like this, and then, no, stop wrapping like that. There we go. We are going to pull that tighter, and then we're going to go on the inside, kind of along there on the front, and then just sew it all along the bottom, pull it in, and that will bring in your tail as you kind of squish it still a little bit here and there, and I like to kind of give it a good squish and shape it with my hands. So that's all there is to this little candy corn dude. I'm gonna cut my tails. And we're gonna do uh, my outro. Again, if you're wanting a pattern for this, there is one right on our Ravelry. We also have a really cute ghosty goo, which we just came out with last week. And there's a pattern for that on our Ravelry as well. I'm thinking about starting a blog. Let me know what you guys think about that down below. It's basically just gonna be a written format of the patterns and a place where you don't have to download a PDF in order to get the patterns. Let me know what you guys think. I have all of the, you know, follow me on Instagram, social media stuff, Patreon, all that stuff. It's all linked down below. My knit crates, all that fun stuff. I'm coming out with a knit crate video for this month and last month actually coming out probably before this one. So go ahead and check that one out if you guys get there. All right. Happy stitches. And until next time, guys, bye.